and scale a little bit, crossing the ocean again. Um, this is housing. It's very expensive housing in a very expensive neighborhood in Zurich. And it's a project that was won in competition. It's in a historic park with a 19th century villa. Um, and the client wanted to provide um, housing for his neighbors when they sell their house and you know, the empty nester syndrome. So each of these is a flat um, that runs all the way through. And the only thing I really want to look at in this project are our exterior screens. Um, here is the project in the park. So we have two buildings, building one, building two in the historic park. This is sitting right above the Palatava Stadelhof, the train station, if you're ever in Zurich. Um, and the whole project is based on the facade and layering of the facade, which I will explain. The outermost layer is this movable sun and privacy screen. We knew we wanted a fabric. We knew we wanted it to be able to move. Uh, we, even the Zurich office, couldn't afford the fabrics that you get in your architectural samples that look really great. So we looked and looked and looked, and we found this, which is actually made for computerized bakeries in Germany running the baked goods through the conveyor belt oven. This is a detail of the facade, and from my point of view, this is an architectural detail. This is what details should look like in terms of the thinking. This is at one of the floor slabs. We have lots of stuff in the floor slab. We have, then you have insulation. Then you have another layer of a cementious material to separate the insulation. You have a wood floor. This is the air input system. It's, of course, earth-cooled because in Zurich it's not allowed to use Freon-based air conditioning anymore because it's so stupid environmentally, so no one does. Um, so this is the air intake. Um, we have a vent here. There's an electrical system that is continuous so you can plug in anywhere. And it's hard for you to see here. This is our exterior screen. This is the motor of the screen. We have double glass. Then in a courtyard location, we have triple glass. Then I'm going to jump to the floor below. So here we have a slider door of the triple glass. We have sliding wood panels. So over the entire place facade, if you want to give yourself privacy, you slide the panel. Maybe it has a painting on it. And then if that's not enough layer, here's the curtain track. The concrete slab, this was the day before we poured the concrete slab, and I like very much showing it to concrete contractors here because they say it's not possible. You can't have all that stuff. And there our structural engineer wanted all that stuff because he wanted the concrete to weigh as little as possible. And no one was concerned with pouring concrete around this there, which I thought was fascinating because here you would have had heart attacks and refusal to do such a crazy thing. Okay, the screen. We had to make sure it worked. So we did a mock-up of the screen, and for 30 days, it was tested. Did it work? Yeah. The fabric really is great, and the, the screen really is great in the sunlight. It catches light in a kind of amazing way. It's really great fun. And a couple of years ago at the Venice Biennale, we were asked for from the Zurich office to submit a project, so we did a full-scale mock-up of this screen. Um, everybody else had a model, and we had our screen.
to the park. That's the park, those are trees. <laughs> and then here is the building reaching into the trees, and this is your completed project. And there was one woman on the board of directors who was an elderly woman just encrusted with diamonds, and she turned to her neighbor and said, is that what it's going to look like? <laughs> and I said, yeah, isn't it great? And she just was like, okay. but, So this was that project, an aerial view, computer view, looking down photovoltaics from the roof stage, ramps, et cetera, in the park. We were two-thirds of the way through the construction documents when the museum came and said, we don't have the money we said we would have. Stop. So we stopped. And a year later, they came back to us and said, we have half the money. Can you do a Walmart? And we said, well, we don't do Walmart, but um, we are interested in typical construction means and look at how we can tweak them into architecture. So we would have to start over, but we can use things as done as tilt slab construction. And they said, well, OK. So I mean, maybe tilt slab more, construction is quite simple. No, I can't, I can't so right the now. current project is a triangular warehouse line okay. building, triangular because that's the shape of the site, with these small buildings that we call fish for some reason that were swimming out to the park. The reason we did those is we said when you run out of money the next time we can cut those and put them incrementally. They said, great, proceed. So we proceeded. can generate energy, and the cow spots would dribble over the south edge. 
show you is also public transportation infrastructure. This is in Portland, Oregon, the Portland Aerial Tram. Um, in Portland, downtown Portland is up here in the plan. There is a hospital complex, Oregon Health and Sciences University. It needed to expand or be the city, and since it was the number one employer, this was not popular. They had nowhere to go. Visualize UCLA on a cliff, buildings and places where no one would build buildings. So Portland, in a very progressive way, which Portland is known for in planning, 